If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this next episode of Mind Pump, we start off by talking about how much we could bench press and lift our top lifts. Uh, here's a little, <laughs> and it's impressive. And you let know, me make tell your you. make your bets now. Who do you think's the strongest? It's probably me. Yeah. Uh, we talk about our past we'll eating routines. Find out why Adam used to pound egos and drink Rockstar drinks, and why I <laughs> used to weigh 230 pounds of raw Guido beef. Yeah. After that, we answer some pretty cool questions. We talk about. Uh, why? what our take is on eating the exact same food all the time for an entire year, your typical classic bodybuilding diet. Uh, we also talk about Soylent, both the food drink mm. and the movie Soylent Green. All you old people know what I'm talking about. Go Google it. We also talk about intermittent fasting and why it's hard to get enough calories when you're intermittent fasting. And is it a good idea to use fasting to gain weight or lose weight? Lastly, we talk about mind pump breaking up. Don't freak out. It's all hypothetical. But what would we do if we left Mind Pump and started our own episode? All those Ooh. topics kick in right after about 25 minutes. So the first bit of topics where we're not uh, talking about any questions and we're just getting into the PRs and ego waffles is the first 25 minutes. Those that want to get right to the nuts and bolts, you can fast forward to 25 minutes in. And during this, this, uh, this hour, we actually talk a lot about nutrition, a lot about fasting. I think that came up a ton. We have a nutrition and fasting bundle on our website. So if you guys are looking for more information related to intermittent fasting inside the guide, we break down how each one of us fasts. There are six different protocols in there, how to follow that. It's a very easy read. We also have a nutrition guide that has a calculator in there to break down exactly how many proteins, carbs, and fats that you should be intaking every single day. And it's full of all kinds of information. In addition to that, we're also revising that. So if you purchase it now, anything that we add to any of those guides, you get absolutely free. You can get all that at mindpumpmedia.com. I wonder how much... Uh, I, wonder I, how I can bench. Not that much right now. <laughs> or ever. I'm wondering... Uh, I used to bench a lot, dude. Really? Yeah, my top, my top uh, bench ever... What did I do? The most I've ever benched was 365. Oh, that's good. Dude. And that was at a body weight of 225, I believe. That's the most I've ever benched. How I'm about trying, you? I'm trying I know, to... Justin, you hit 405 once, right? I did, yeah. I've never hit four plates. What's the most you've ever bench pressed, Adam? Um, uh, Probably 350, actually. I don't think I've done more than 350. Dang. Yeah, but I've also done that on incline, too. You did 350 on incline? Yes. That's not Whoa. that much. <laughs> so I don't know a lot of people that... Have, like, uh, I went on a mission, like, the last couple... When I was competing, I was really... Uh, working on building uh, my upper chest. And so I totally neglected uh, flat bench because that's all I did for years. Mm -hmm. And I stayed away from it, incline because my mm -hmm. incline was significantly weak. Oh, yeah. I got to that point for sure. And so then I flipped it on its head and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to flat bench hardly ever. If anything, I did it with dumbbells and then I would always incline press. And I caught my incline press up to my flat bench press. Wow! So I I didn't really I I don't who knows where if I could have progressed my my flat a little bit further. I really think just recently have I honed in on my bench press technique. You know, for years I was bodybuilder bench pressing. So elbows out bench. Yeah, flaring them out, catching at ninety degrees. You know, real controlled four second negative. So one thing that I could do, like even though I wasn't the strongest you know, a uh, bench presser is, you know, I could control a heavy amount of weight. I didn't power. I never one, one, one. Like I didn't start doing like power type lifts until I got with you guys. I never did one, 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 anything. Everything I did was hypertrophy type based training. So I could get under with 275, 315 and control it mm -hmm. really, really well, slow and control where when I'd work out with other guys that were maybe stronger than me, but they would have to boom, like, you know, power lift it yeah. up. Like that's, yeah. I didn't have to. Well, train. a typical, well, so when I did 365, uh, it was, it wasn't, well, I guess it was a long time ago. It's so funny. When you, the older you get, the more <laughs> distorted your 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 yeah. idea of time goes. Yeah, I was like, oh, just like last year. Yeah. Wait a second, that was. And like I'm thinking about my like, well, that was like 15 years. Yeah, ago. it was like 10 or 12 Shit. years ago. So um, when I did 365, I actually did a pause. I did a one and a half second pause at the chest because I actually thought for a second I'd compete in powerlifting, 
Oh, but, really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Only because my deadlift, I have, a, I, I've had exceptional deadlifts, and so I thought, oh, I'm going to compete, and then I realized that I'd lose at everything else. So, but this is exciting. This is a fun conversation. What are your? And you got to be totally honest. No lying here. Everybody, pinky swear. Whoa. What are your top, like real lifts, like not like with good form, and that would probably qualify as like a good, like what's your best ever bench press, deadlift, uh, squat, overhead press, front squat, like or whatever else you want to say that's impressive. Like, mm. I've, impress me. I've benched on incline and flat three fifty. That's pretty damn good. I have deadlifted. 555. I have squatted 405 and I have overhead pressed. I think I haven't done back when I used to bodybuilder overhead press, which I saw. So I don't really count that anymore with the 90. I was doing over 225. Um, wow, I, seated. I, yeah, but that now t- was this down to like the 90, head? 90 degrees oh, okay. type shit. Yeah, so like I don't really count that, right? So a full overhead press now, mm-hmm. I'm like more like 185 has been like a a, a tough controlled full range of motion standing press Mm -hmm. so those are probably my my big ones i struggled for a very long time squatting like i so that was a big thing for me was to get over 400 pounds squatting and with the type of depth that i'm getting now so i've made leaps and bounds with that i came right out the gates deadlifting pretty well like it's it it definitely feeds easy it. for you yeah it you de- got the long arms yeah i think like the i mean the right when i really started getting into deadlifting i i shot up to 400 pounds real quick mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. real quick i shot up to 400 pounds and then from there it was like you know building up to over 500 then 550 mm-hmm. uh so that one that 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 lift definitely bodes well for my body type what about you justin hmm. um i know you've benched 405 benched 405 and that was in college both and then um i want to say maybe five years ago and i was on this like kick of just like benching and and getting that back in the routine it it took me like a year to ramp up to that um but um yeah i kind of go in phases with benching but uh like squatting wise i i'm trying to remember i think i don't think i hit the five bill mark i think i came just under that um like 475 range, maybe a little bit higher than that. But uh, I never deadlifted, so that's my weakest lift for sure. Like, I just literally started doing that, I want to say, maybe like five, six years ago. So um, the most I ever I ever did, that was probably like 455, something like that. Um, and You have a big overhead press. Overhead press I can do. You're yeah. really strong in the overhead yeah, press. Yeah, that's one of my strongest lifts probably. What so. was your best? Um, 275. Holy shit. Yeah. Push press? Push press. Fuck. Yeah. That's a lot, dude. Did a 275 push press. And your kettlebell, your one-arm kettlebell press is pretty. You did the one... 123. 123. Yeah, so what was that 16 kilograms? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So I did... So three... I, I'm almost positive 365 or 355 bench. Now, here's a shitty thing about um, bench press. I chased that for a long time because that was like the lift, right? Like, how much can you bench? Mm-hmm. And uh, I, because of that, I my AC joint on my left shoulder ended up becoming fucked because I just I didn't understand really training those imbalances or whatever as well as I do now. I had to get AC joint surgery, and I can never – I never go above 225 now because I just don't have the stability in my left shoulder no matter what I do. But I did that. I did my overhead push press. The most I've ever done is 225. Deadlift that I've pulled 600 pounds, but I also weighed 220 something. So I was really heavy. Uh, what was what would be an impressive? Oh, uh, rows. I can if I really push rows and I eat a lot, I can row like a f- fucking horse. And I've actually done sets with 315 for um, for good reps with rows. Um, as overhead press was always my yeah. one of my more hard my harder lifts. And if you look at my thoracic curve, I have like a little bit of an excessive thoracic curve, like a little rounding, and it makes it hard. Like the overhead pre- press part makes it hard, so I lose a lot of strength there mm-hmm. when I go overhead. But you know where I used to fuck everyone up? This is the crazy thing. If I worked out with someone and I wanted to be an asshole and like you know just what you know cock strong ego or whatever, I would always do a reverse curl because I could reverse curl 
more i just used to dominate people it's really really weird huh. i i was i was at one it's point kind of a weird lift to go heavy with just, it's weird right <laughs> huh? yeah. and isn't that weird yeah but for whatever reason i, I was got a, a, i got a nasty reverse curl yeah. I, uh, I was but i did bicep and tricep fucking four days a week for 10 uh, years that that makes so sense. i was a monster at bicep curls i don't even i didn't even drop that because it wasn't something i was you know back then i thought it was cool well, but it's, now weird. It's, uh, it's kind it's, of an off lift you yeah know? dude yeah. i used to i concentrate curls controlled for reps for day i could curl 50 pound dumbbells like crazy that is one of the most uh dramatic differences now so crazy all these numbers we're talking those are all numbers i've hit in the last year to two years mm. so i'm i'm at the strongest i've ever been in my life right now at 35 years mm. old which is something i'm most proud of because in the past i trained so much for hypertrophy that Mm. I didn't have any really strong numbers with my big lifts. I never, I never did a, I never did an, I never did a lift less than five to eight reps, and it was rare that I went that low. I was typically in the eight to fifteen rep range mm -hmm. with supersets mm. and tri sets. Like I was Mister Pump, yeah. and that was how I trained my body. And just recently, have I got into heavy lifting? If there was anything I lifted really heavy, it was like biceps. Like I yeah. cur curled like crazy. See, I. Uh, I've lost a bit of power and I kind of know that because I, I used to actually do a lot of getting like, old, <laughs> like cleans and, and clean and jerks. And, uh, like that was, I was pretty strong and clean and jerk. Um, at one point I did a clean for like three fifteen. And oh shit. I did a clean and jerk for uh two seventy five, but, um, yeah, like I, that's something that it's so technical and like, it's such a skill that, like I was doing that consistently for like five years, you know, just like just repetitious See, with those specific lifts. And I used to have this ability to just, if I wanted to just bulk up and I would do this, right. I'd get my body weight up to 220 to 230 all like all the time uh, and get real strong while doing it. And a, a lot of it wasn't muscle. I just got real big and, you know, God forbid, I know there's pictures floating around there on the internet. And if someone finds one, I'm fucked. This can be a meme that will go viral, I promise you. Because <laughs> during these periods of time, I also would have long hair. So I literally look like, and my hair gets kind of wavy and curly a little bit. So I look like... Just a beefy wrestler. I look like a like an eight nine. Like I need like I need to like I'm driving an IROC and I come out with my <laughs> like, fucking hair. Like Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah. like awesome. I, I just look ridiculous. A lot of sounds like a lot of awesomeness to me. No, and you know, <laughs> yeah. what's, but you know what's crazy is I don't think I could bulk up now if I wanted to like that. I don't think I could handle the amount of food that I ate. You know, to do that, I'm pretty sure that played a role in my gut problems. It's not. Is you know what? It's the grass is always green on the other side, right? So bulking is really difficult when you have a body type like mine or yours, mm. and just like it is for somebody. Oh, I forced it. Yeah, it was to, for me to. What to, would you uh, eat? I mean, I'm I'm kind of in the same. I know you guys have always said that, and like it's been hard, but like I mean, there's been a point where I was having to bulk up for because they moved me to inside linebacker, and I went from outside linebacker, and it was like, dude, shoveling food constantly and just. I, you get to a point where you know that like you just lose balance, athleticism. <laughs> you just become a big. You're just a piece of meat. juggernaut of of a meat. You know how much? What's the heaviest you are, you guys have ever been? Because I, I I'm I've gonna surprise you in, guys. Two forty five. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, I've heavy been, as fuck. I've, I've been two forty in the more. I, I mean, naked in the morning, nothing in my system. Two thirty five. Yeah, I got two. I got up to two forty, and yeah. I was a fucking. Like I was a horse, and uh, my staff. This is this is when I managed uh, Santa Teresa, and my staff would joke with me because if I got on a stationary bike or something for like five minutes, I was exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just this big like walking glob of it, it whatever. Would, it'd be amazing to see what I would build if I actually went aggressively like that again because I was two forty and all upper body. Like my my legs were nowhere the size that they are now. Like I carry it, my my weight stays pretty consistent between two ten and two twenty, and that's definitely because of my lower my lower development is like mm -hmm. way more than I used. I used to if I was off the diet or off of bulking, I would drop down to like one eighty one ninety real quick because I would just dwindle away. And my upper body right now is like the smallest it's ever been. Dude, it's I, yeah, there's a difference. Mine stayed on for a long time. <laughs> I couldn't get it off, dude. That was so hard to get back down to reasonable weight again. Oh, my God. It took me like a oh, year no, and a half. I, I had to push it so hard that all I had to do was stop pushing it, and i drop 20 pounds. But oh, yeah, I can too, tell you, too. I could tell you like 
like what a day would look like with nutrition. Like th- th- this is, and I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, I would. I, wa- I remember. I would wake vividly. up in the morning, and I'm not bullshitting you. I'd wake up in the morning, and I'd have, I'd get a punch bowl, uh, and I'd eat a fucking, uh, pretty much a half a box of Cheerios with whole milk. I'd have ten whole eggs with cheese, and I'd have a banana. That was my breakfast. For the rest of the day, I would split up about th- uh, three cups of white rice and two pounds of ground beef. That's what I'd eat throughout the day. Then I'd come home for dinner, and it would be another pound of meat and bowl of pasta. And so, I, I mean, I was consuming such a tremendous amount of calories. I remember, like, I'd, I'd be in between clients. Like, I'd be training a client, and Damn. we'd finish, like, 10 minutes early, so I had 10 minutes to eat. And I'd go in the back, and I'd have a bowl of white rice with about a pound of ground beef in it. And then I'd take a uh, sauce that I'd buy at the store and I'd pour it on there so that it had some kind of <clears throat> viscosity so I could swallow it. Otherwise it'd be <laughs> trying to swallow it. And I just, Oh my God. And then I'd go train my clients. Your whole existence was to just shovel food. But it was, I was eating well, you know, five of these things a day. I can't imagine. Cause it, for you, it had to have been really similar to what, what I realized was, so I struggled with gaining forever. And I just thought it was just going to be impossible. I'll never be this big, massive guy. Just, and when when I remember we, I got... <laughs> You're a dick, Doug. <laughs> Doug found the pic. That's so great. <laughs> You're a dick. Where'd you find that? Uh, online. Oh, wow. You Everything's I, online. You know what's funny? Oh, That's wow. not a 230 picture. You look Trust pow- me. You look powerful, bro. If you saw yeah. a 230 picture, you guys would you guys would make fun uh, of me forever. So do uh, you remember... Like I actually... So I, I've been somebody who tracked for a very long time. When uh, I got the body bug and I started like learning like how much my body was burning and I was training like 10, 12 clients a day. Plus I'm training every single day, like super intense. So I was fucking burning like 5,000 plus calories oh, yeah. a day. Just walking the floor, picking Just, up weights, moving yeah. them like all day. So that, that was, like crazy. So, so in order for me to build, I needed to be eating at least that, if not a certain, so I had, I would go on these, I would go for two weeks, like really good. And then all it would take is one week of just being not, you know, intuitively eating or eating mindlessly and I would just drop 10 pounds like right away because my metabolism was so fast and I was moving so much that I couldn't put this on. So the only way I got beyond this was this. And it was, God, I think back how bad this was. This is this is true story right here. Like this is how I got to 240 was I'd start every, almost every day like this. I ate Eggo waffles. So I'd have <laughs> I'd have four Eggo mm. waffles. And Leo, my ego. I'd have, uh, and I'd put peanut butter all over them, and then drench them, drench them in syrup, and drink a glass of whole milk. That would get, that would be like on my way to work. So on my way to twenty four. So then I'd get to twenty four. I used to put peanut butter and waffles. As soon as I ride to twenty four, I finish. So these mills are only about fifteen minutes apart. So I do that. I then I go. I'd walk right across the street where we had this little donut shop. And I would get two. Are you, are you talking about Santa Teresa? Uh, yeah, I would oh, get I, t- exactly. I would get two of these <laughs> ham, egg, and cheese bagels. Oh my god, I remember those. One glazed donut and a rock star, a regular rock star, and that's what I would start like my my morning with. Then my prepared meals, because then I would always come to work with my chicken and rice, kind of like how you do with your beef and rice, and those would be spread out throughout the day every two hours. And then at lunchtime, post workout, I would go get a foot long or two sometimes from Togo's, Quiznos, or whatever. And then after that meal, two or three hours later, I'm having my chicken and rice meals. And then at the very end of the day, I would drive and I'd stop by McDonald's and I would get a number one plus a Big Mac uh, plus 20-piece McNuggets to finish my night off. Holy and shit. And that would keep me at about a 6,000 6, to 7,000 calorie intake on a daily basis to keep me in that surplus of like gaining. Now, what about shakes? So shakes to me, I and shakes, you throw them in there, right? Yeah, shakes would be in there. Um, I used to eat. That meals. was my go-to, man. Bro, I gaining. used to eat meals, and my drink with my meal yeah, would be a shake. Was a fucking shake, oh, and that's, that's so gross. That's how I use shakes. So shakes yeah. for me would be at the end of the night, more often than not, and it would be to get that extra. But I'd have that. Yeah. that my I would have it first thing in the morning before I would, did the six a.m. workout, and so I would add my weight gainer three thousand, five thousand, oh, whatever the fuck it was. And then, you know, put in my creatine and then, like, double up on, uh, uh, like, raw eggs I'm putting in there. I'm putting in, like, it was just, like, this cocktail of, you know, you're going to have, like, horrific farts and shits all day. <laughs> Dude. You know, like, I would sit in class and <laughs> it, that, would, that was the start. 
you know, and then I would eat breakfast after I was done working out. And then after that, in Bro, class, I'd have, you know. After, after I'd eat all the, because I didn't even talk about the shakes. After I'd eat all this food, like Adam, and by the way, I'd have a pro, post-workout protein shake always, regardless of what my diet was, right? Then at the end of the day, now I've had my, all my meals, and I'm literally, at the end of the day, every night, I was going to bed like, oh my God, I can't, I'm like stuffed, right? Yeah. No, it's shake time, dude. It's fucking <laughs> no. shake time. Yeah. I would suck buy, it up, Buttercup. Bro, yeah. I would buy either Mega Mass three thousand because fuck Mega Mass two thousand. I'm right. going for three thousand. No, you got to get all of which, it. Which, by the way, me, I I figured this out later on. Mega Mass three thousand was the same thing as Mega Mass two thousand. The difference is it's a bigger serving size. That's it. So, uh, I but I, I don't know any better. I'm like, really? oh, this has got more calories. I'd buy Mega Mass three thousand vanilla. Because I, I got that's what that was my flavor, oh, and I get chocolate all day. I get whole milk. I'd put two bananas, probably three tablespoons of peanut butter. I'd throw in a couple of, of eggs, and then I would put in and it, and if you remember that the the, the the shakes, they came in what looked like a paint bucket. Yeah, <laughs> literally, literally, it was a bucket yeah. with the same top that you you know how you open a paint bucket and you got to kind of get bleep. underneath it with yeah. your nails and right. And then this, the demons come out. And it was a massive, it was a massive eight pound bucket of powder. But that eight pound bucket of powder had a grand total of 10 servings in there because a serving was like three scoops, but it wasn't a scoop. The scoop was the size of a shovel. Like, I don't know how to explain it. A normal protein powder scoop, yeah. it would take you four or five to fill up one of these, right? Yeah. And it was two or three of these scoops. And by the way, Which most- that's all it really is. Most, it's just a giant just a serving giant size. fucking- Serving size of protein. No, powder. it's not because the protein was always around 50 grams from the pro- from the actual powder because I had a bunch more from I the I never milk paid attention to that. I just was like- But ah, what it was was another 100 something calories, 100 or 200 uh, grams of carbs in the form of maltodextrin. So that's all it was, was a protein shake with a shit ton- of maltodextrin because remember back then fat was bad so there's no fat in it it was all carbs and protein so I take this scoop and I throw it in the blender and I I'm not I'm not lying I got so in tr- so much in trouble with my my mom and then later on my wife who get pissed off because I broke blenders because I put these scoops in there with the milk and the banana all that stuff and I turn it on and then the sound that the pr- that the blender would make would be Bleh. and you know how you see a shake and it spins real fast no no no. This was a slow shake with a very, like, if you looked at the top of it, all you saw was a little bit of a spiral going down because it looked like I was making cement. This is why cement. When, uh, when it was like, the Vitamix, the Vitamix yeah. and Ninja came out, it was like fucking game changer. Game oh, dude. over. Dude, so and so I, I would sit there and I'd, I'd drink it and then take breaks in between, like, gulp. <laughs> I'd put it down and it's like so thick. Bro, I'd breathe, like, yeah. yeah. And it, the challenge was to not throw up. It's just like oil. How fucked up is that? That well, was the challenge. I actually still struggled, even with all this crap we're talking about, was still with putting weight on, that I actually bought a, and <clears throat> we we have it, actually. That's the same fridge right there. That fridge has been with me for a long time. That's so your it. shake fridge? Wow. It was. And I had I used to buy Myoplex ready-to-drink shakes and, and muscle milks, and I used to keep them next to my bed, and then I'd set my alarm. Oh, fuck you. I did the same thing. At like 3 o'clock, oh, in, wow. at wow. three o'clock in the I morning. I heard of people doing that. My alarm would go off. I would, with my eyes closed, literally just roll over, open yeah. the fridge, pound the shake, put it back down, go, roll, go back to sleep. I you remember know, reading what uh, the guy, like, uh, what's his name? Hugh Jackman that was playing Wolverine. Like that was his thing. Like he had to wake himself up and have like shakes and all that. Stupid. It's still it, you know what the touted. irony of all that is? The irony is sleep is one of the best things you could do to build muscle. So you're interrupting your sleep yeah. to drink some bullshit. Well, the one thing that I can say to it as far as, because I got big, there's no doubt in it. I got big from it. What I think is best about all of that was, or the takeaway from for me was the regimen, like having a detailed regimen that I would follow. And I, and I took a lot of that and applied it to when I got into competing. Now, when I got into competing, I was far more educated and experienced. And so I didn't do any of that type of stuff to get ready, which is funny, right? So the best aesthetic shape I've ever been in my life had nothing to do with any of that. Well, no, because that stuff just makes you big, bloated and fat and sloppy looking, which is what I feel like a lot of guys look like inside the gym that are trying to build and get bulky is Mm -hmm. they're just puffy. You know, they're all puffy because they're, they're trying some anabolics. They're taking tons of shit and they just put on some mass and size. Most of it's water and shit. So, but what it did teach me was this, like this, 
I need to be structured and, you know, oh, measuring, weighing, doing all that. That is what, because otherwise I always underestimated the amount of activity I was doing and I always overestimated the amount of nutrients that I was getting, which is still applies to today. And I just recently discussed this, that, you know, we talk openly about, you know, the anti, you know, supplement industry and how much they push protein on everybody because, you know, bodybuilders now are taking two, three grams per body weight, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. But for a guy like me who naturally gravitates to carbohydrates or naturally just doesn't eat, like I can go for hours and not consume a meal. And then I'm at, it's five o'clock and I'm at a total of 600 calories for the day. And a guy my size needs to eat four or 5,000 calories to keep building. That's just not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, that. I'm, so I would have to put in this, put in this structure in place in order to continue to build and and get all the nutrients that I need. So I do understand where some of these young guys that are trying to build mass or build mass and young girls, same thing too. And they struggle with putting mass on because they're not, they're not eating enough and they need, they need to put some sort of structure. And the first thing I always tell people, this is where the tracking did wonders for me. Having a, having a tool like a Fitbit or a body bug or whatever fucking tool you like, that's as long as it's pretty accurate and tracking how much you're actually burning, how much you're actually consuming, and then structuring your day around that to make sure you're getting the, the vital nutrients that your body needs to build, you know? Excellent. Bird. bird. The bird is the word. Today's Quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Quaw. The eagle has landed. Quaw. First up is Beach Cruiser 83. Uh. Is it bad to eat the exact same healthy bodybuilding meal plan every day over the course of oh, a year? The irony. I love, I love the irony of the first question <laughs> here. Uh, uh, healthy. Yeah, first of all, it's not healthy. So even if you eat a great uh, diet, even if you map out and you're like, these are the perfect uh, foods, macronutrients, calories, um, you know, vegetables, whatever, uh, for the day. So now I'm going to eat them the exact same portions and foods every single day for every single meal, which is what old school bodybuilders used to do, and I do that for a year, uh, that should be excellent, right? Wrong. Uh, here's some detriment. Now, here's some positives to that. The positives are you're going to eat the right amount of calories and macronutrients. The negatives are eating the same exact foods all the time you is going to- Malnourished. You can create some, some serious food intolerances. If you have any type of inflammation in your gut- you are going to, uh, you're very likely to produce antibodies to the foods that you consume all the time and become intolerant to them. I've had many clients who I've worked with who we've identified food intolerances for them. And they're like, but I always eat that food. Mm. You know, like I have an intolerance to bananas. Like I always eat bananas. It's like, well, that's probably why you have an intolerance. I mean, you got to keep in mind that the body, the human body uh, evolved eating what was around, which meant you followed the seasons and you followed the terrain and the animals around you. We didn't understand farming until, I mean, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint, relatively recently. And with farming, the invention of farming, our food choices became very, very, very narrow. And to this day, they still are very narrow. The major crops and foods that we grow today are limited to a few things like soy, corn, wheat. You know, that's pretty much it, right? But it wasn't like that for mostly human civilization. So the body kind of thrives on variety. So aside from having the right macros and calories, you want to give yourself variety. Now that's not to that's also not to mention all the these these micronutrients yes. and these phytonutrients and compounds that are found in foods that you don't get in other foods. For example, when you eat foods that like you know, this that you eat vegetables that are purple. There's certain phytonutrients that give it that purple color that you'll only get from purple vegetables that you won't get from orange or yellow or green vegetables. They have other benefits. So variety is is incredible. And I've seen lots of people mess themselves up by doing not to mention the mental. Fuck, why don't we talk about that? Well, yeah. first first I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here because 
you got to also take it into pers- what about the person who, you know, and I was an example of this, was eating Taco Bell at a certain time, and then I was eating Eggo waffles and drinking Rock Stars, and days would go by and I would miss vegetables. Like this was a very normal eating pattern for me. And then all of a sudden I decided I'm going to get on this healthy bodybuilding meal plan where I'm having tilapia, asparagus or whatever, who is doing more harm to their body? If we're, if we're doing a versus, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, think about that. And now, well, that's easy. It's an easy answer, but in the, in the, let me tell you what the problem with that is. The, the problem with that question that question is always, or that statement is always what's used to defend something. So uh, I'll give you an example of how that may be used in, in other aspects of life. So like if I, if smoking cigarettes, let's say I smoke five cigarettes a day and someone's like, hey man, you need to stop smoking five cigarettes a day. And I'm like, well, I used to smoke a pack a day, so it's way better now. I'm, I'm managing it. Yeah. And it, that's not the point, right? Definitely eating. I was doing heroin. Yeah, definitely eating the regimen and diet. Probably going to be better for you over the course of a year than eating a shitty diet, over consuming calories, and all that other stuff. But the question isn't, you know, what's better. The question really is, is it, is it a great? Yeah, choice? but I think that's important to make that clear because when we come out and say that you know eating a healthy bodybuilding meal plan is not ideal, is not healthy for you, could have all these issues with your gut, so on and so forth, which you mentioned, then does that detour the kid or someone who was considering doing that who is, has no structure right now and is eating Taco Bell, Eggo waffles, mm-hmm. and drinking rock stars? Well, that's and, one, yeah, that's one point. I think the other point is just like ease, you know, ease of the, the mental piece to it. Like, so if I can stick within a regiment that's not – you know, full of variety and I have to think about my next move as much. I know in like in the competing world, right, you can voice in Adam, of course, with this, uh, where it gets to the point where, um, I mean, you, <clears throat> you're basically like, you're, you have this mental fog about you going throughout, you know, the process, the more intense it gets, you know, towards the end and restrictive. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like some of that has to do with the fact that, they don't, they just want to have it in a little box. It has to have like, you know, your macros or this, this, and this, and it's consistent. And then that's what I'm putting in and done. I'm done. I don't have to think anymore. Yeah. I think it, there's steps, uh, there's steps towards, uh, you know, a, a healthier lifestyle. And if you're at the, if you're at the step where you're eating just haphazardly, you don't know what's in food. A lot of people are like that, right? They have no idea. They're really not really aware of what's in food. They're eating kind of crappy, like you're saying, Adam, eating the Taco Bell and Eggo waffles and all that stuff. The next step that I would coach someone on, and this is usually how I coach people, is I start by making them track and being on a more regimented schedule. That's the next step. It's better than what they were doing before, and they get to understand what's in food and control it, and it becomes conscious. They're consciously aware of what's going on. Yeah. But the step after that would be a move away from that because if you stay in that, mm-hmm. you know, like let's talk about let's talk about the mental piece. Could you imagine the the uh, well, think you, about the, the, the yeah, problem? There's, there's no doubt that the, it's not creating a healthy relationship with food because then you'll forever. And this is what's is so apparent in um, the bodybuilding world is that all these athletes that get into this 2% and have the most, they're in the most amazing shape of their lives forever. They have these, and what they did to get there is a, not a realistic lifestyle that they can live forever. They had to and eat. And they always associate that yes. process with that so specific that's, formula. Exactly. So yeah. that creates a very poor connection to food and, and exercise and training and dieting with that. Oh, if I ever want to get in shape, I got to do this, which, which leads later on to this yo-yo, no different than the super obese person. You just happen to yo-yo back and forth between, you know, 20% and 5%, 20% and 5% where you binge after you get off of dieting this certain way, you let yourself go so far. Then you go like, oh my God, I'm getting fat. Now I need to get back to my Tupperware meals where mm-hmm. I eat asparagus and broccoli. Yeah. Every, you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. So it, it, you lean no, on it. No doubt it is. It's not that far different though, to me than the IFYM thing is, I, and I'm, I'm like, I'm looking. It has this, more flexibility. Yeah, I'm looking at this question. I'm wondering, what would I rather take on as a client? Would I rather get somebody who came to me 
and they were the healthy bodybuilding clean eaters and they that's all the way that's how they eat then they've been that way for a long time mm -hmm. or the IIFYM person and who would I rather take on and who am I going to need to put the most amount of work Who's going to have a better transition? Yes. And that's a very I, uh, that's a tough one. I, I yeah. think I would almost say IIFYM is a half a step ahead of the eat the same food all the time. Possibly. Right? Hmm. It's like a progression. I'll tell you I what. Don't know. I'll tell I don't you know what. either because I'll, I don't know about that. Because, because I think that they're, I, they're making priority for the junk to to repeat its way into, you know, right. the yeah, cycle. But, but at least like they, under, like, they they understand a little bit of flexibility. I don't know. It's tough because taking someone from knowing nothing about food and teaching them how to track mm -hmm. and eat certain foods and having structure, believe it or not, I found to be easier. That's an easier step to take than taking someone who tracks everything and has it all ironed out, whatever, from there to intuitive. That's a fucking hard step. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I'm working a lot with right now with some of the online people that I work with is now I've got to take you from this tracking mm -hmm. to, and I've, there's a bunch of steps that I've designed in between to get them to that intuitive eating uh, you know, part but it's a hard, uh, it's a hard decision. Here's the other thing. You, here's what you want to consider too. Like the body, uh, we've said this a million times on Mind Pump, is an adaptation machine. Your ability to adapt, your body's ability to adapt, really is closely tied to your overall health and longevity. And uh, you know, here's the connection to that. If I eat a keto diet all the time, okay, and they do a gut test on me and they test my microbiome, okay, my bi microbiota, what they're going to find is the majority of the bacteria that they're going to find in my gut is there to break down fats. And I'm going to have very little, uh, you mm. know, uh, bacteria that's there to break down starches and carbohydrates. So okay? you become less efficient at I, that. I become very, my, my body has become so efficient and adapted to the keto diet that I've lost a lot of that variability um, with my with my microbiome, and this is a fact, by the way. They, they, you will you'll see this in people who eat a particular way all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, is that good? Well, no. It, it's it's no different than anything else that you do with your body, where you you prevent your you, you almost take away your body's ability to adapt to things. Because if you take someone who's eaten keto for years and we're super strict on it. Give them a high carb meal, healthy carbs. Give them a high, you know, give them a bunch of sweet potatoes, rice, whatever. They're going to have really bad gut issues yeah. right away. They've lost their, their ability to adapt to those foods. In fact, I've had to tell people to slowly introduce certain things so that they can build up other bacteria in their gut and, and, and get their body's ability to digest and break things down. So eating the same exact foods is, is really no different. And this is why I, I try to do variety all the time where I do my vegan days and I'll have days where I eat more carbohydrates and I do tend to trend more towards the higher fat days because on the other levels, I, you know, the other things in terms of my mind and all that else, inflammation, I just feel better on those. But you don't want to, you don't want your body to lose its ability to adapt to different, you know, different foods. So um, there's a lot of reasons why it's not a good idea to be no. I think super we, strict I think all we all agree that it's it's not healthy. In fact, you know, I know that IFYM actually was created as the counterculture to the mm -hmm. crazy healthy bodybuilding. Right. Eat the same thing over every single day. Um, I don't think that you're going to see a, one a person who was eating shitty terrible food if all of a sudden decide, hey, I'm going to start eating this way super strict. In fact, there's probably a lot of health benefits to that person that's going to see better uh, and be better markers at mm -hmm. the at the beginning initially. Oh, yeah. But no, if you do that, then you got to know that eventually you're, you 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 want to transition away from that into a where you're rotating your foods. I think mm -hmm. that that we're all in agreement with yes. that, right? Yeah, and I think it's it's the mindset of like seeking out foods that are going to benefit my body's health and well being. Like that's, I mean, that's such a it 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 sounds like vague, you know, to a lot of people that need structure. And they need something that's like easy and repetitive, but but and and, and, and that changes. Yeah. What foods? It does I, change. That's the thing, right? You have it, to cycle it in and do out. Do you know? You know exactly. what this? This again, we've had so many questions, and, and sooner or later, I'm going to get motivated. And I've, st <laughs> I've, I am. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again because maybe if I get enough people pushing me to do it, I would love to do this with you guys. I've always wanted to create a diet that flips dieting on its head. It's the opposite of dieting. In fact, it is 
a diet designed towards going the after anti diet diet. No, going after food. If you were oh, to yeah, yeah. look at all the the types of foods that have all these great health, ra- that, rather than saying don't eat this, yes, but aim yeah. for this. Aim for this many in the week. Aim for this many in the week. Like, and, oops, and, I've skipped. You know, because I haven't eaten this in the diet. I got to go seek that next. Yes, yeah. and I bet if you the you, maps you, anti diet. If you flip the diet protocol on its head, instead of trying to restrict from certain things, and and instead of looking at it like that, there's a ton of things that your body gets a ton of nutrients from and can you go after that and then giving people guidelines of how much you're trying to get at least that in there i bet you most people would struggle with getting all those things in their diet on a weekly basis that'd be a very interesting experience actually right? that's that's i think it's brilliant because yeah, it is. if you give if you and if you make a little rule and they're like hey eat whatever you want we don't care so long as you hit these things that you're supposed to chase mm-hmm. you're probably going to be pretty Look satiated at your macro and micronutrients yeah, you'll probably profiles. be you'll probably be satiated and set and satisfied and less likely to overeat anyway, right? Right. I think it'd be cool. All right. All right. Our next question is from Primal Holistic Fitness. Again, the opposite right Whoa. here. Yeah. <laughs> what is your take on Soylent and drinking all of your food? You know what this question reminds me of? People. Remember in The Matrix when, uh, what's his name? Uh, Agent, fuck is his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, Not yeah. Neo, but... Uh, right, right. The, the... God, I can't remember. I can't believe I forgot his name. Anyway... Uh, Smith. Smith. Okay. Yeah, he's a Smith. Yeah. He he's telling them how they the computers or the artificial intelligence created the first matrix and it was perfect. Mm-hmm. It gave you everything you wanted. Utopia. It was a utopia. But it crashed because the human mind Nobody believed in it. couldn't accept it. Yeah. And what's fascinating about that statement is that <clears throat> imagine it's kind of true, right? Imagine if you lived in a prison, a jail. You're not allowed to leave. You can't do anything, you know, but you have all the food, you know, perfect food. You have, you know, the sleep or whatever. Um, Here you go. You're in here. We control everything, but it's everything that you need. How happy would you be? Right. (laughs) You'd be miserable. And that's the psychological aspect of Soylent and drinking all your food. I think, and there's a, there's a health aspect and, and a physiological one that we'll get into. But I think from a psychological standpoint, it's never worked. Liquid food has been around forever, yeah. and it, from a psychological standpoint, uh, I can see how some people are drawn to it. Yeah. People who are like, I don't want to well, worry about food. I just want you to tell me what to eat. Exactly. But it's, you ain't can't live that way. The appeal of it really was for uh, programmers and, and developers, for them, so they didn't have to leave their desk uh, to go to lunch. It's, this became like a competitive thing, like who could martyr themselves, you know, and, and like finish these projects, you know, in a more timely manner. And this is just like, I mean, the Silicon Valley has gone through a lot of different waves, but this is definitely one of those things that kind of took popularity because um, <clears throat> it, it's very competitive, you know, it's competitive to keep your job. And uh, th- this became kind of a movement where, um, well, I could just get all the nutrients I need, you know, right here at my desk and have it like, boom, I just, I just ate everything I needed right then. It's five minutes, whatever. I'm back to productivity. Mm-hmm. So now isn't Soylent like a, it's a, it's a take on the movie Soylent Green. It must be right. Yeah. And yeah. for those of you, <laughs> it's yeah. an old movie. It's made of people. Yeah. Like, there's, there's caution there. You just, you, know? gave, you just gave away the end of the movie. Damn it. It's a, it's a it's sci-fi true. movie. You should watch it. I don't know why you'd name your company Soylent. I know. After I, that I, fucking movie. I, I, uh, I have no idea. Yeah. Charlton but, Heston ro- rolls his eyes. But, re- you know, from a physiological standpoint, there's certain enzymes. God, that look body, how great their website is. I, oh, literally. it's It says on the website, eating is easy, engineered nutrition, you know, frees up your time as if- Eating was this horrible such pain. Such a hassle. In, yeah, such this pain in the <laughs> ass. Uh, yeah. Food 2.0, it's completely advertised towards uh, the How do the you hang out with Silicon people Valley. when you eliminate food? Right. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So well, this it, it feeds into the the gaming culture too, right, Justin? Yeah, exactly. Isn't, isn't it big with that? Like, I'm sure, like, drink I'm, your Mountain Dew and then you're yes, soilent. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> While you game away for yeah. 15 hours. Now, from a physiological standpoint, look, there's certain enzymes that your body, you know, has that uses break that breaks down certain foods that it replenishes and, and it becomes it can deplete. There's certain micronutrients and phytonutrients and things in food that I guarantee you are not in this. There's things in food we haven't even identified. There's combinations of things in food that we don't know how they interact with the human body. You need to understand just how complex the process of eating food and assimilating food is 
and we still know there's still a lot we don't know about it. So there is no, who knows, maybe in the future when, you know, artificial intelligence becomes so hyper intelligent that it could literally design food for us, but we're nowhere near that. So yeah. there's a lot of things you're not getting. Well, you're, isn't that, I mean, just the whole process of chewing and <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, like digesting, like the whole, like in a slow enough fashion to well, where chewing, it can process everything chewing is and gather the, the digestive nutrients. process. That's yeah. part of the digestive process. You're skipping a part you're of that process. You're skipping it. Yeah. Like you're just accelerating it right to like hoping that it, you're just going to absorb this, you know? And uh, I just, <laughs> I mean, have you guys seen the movie WALL-E? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, come on. Like uh, what motivation? I don't know. Food is so ingrained in, in in movement too. I mean, it's, it's, there's a whole process to that, that we're just going to like cut this off and just drink. Like I just see like red flags. And I tell you this right now, uh, I'll bet all the money in the world that the vast majority, like vast majority of people who are committed to just having Soylent every day, the vast majority at some point are going to go off of it. And they are going to have set their bodies up horribly Mm. for processing real food. And they're also going to set up their minds horribly yeah. because they've now done this 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 uh, this thing for with their brain where they're just drinking their food. They're not chewing. They're not yeah. utilizing their body uh, the way that it evolved uh, to be used. And you now stop they're going to listening go, to music. You stop, you know, going to movies. You're like, ah, like that's just you know. Well, the, I, I honest to God think that it's very irresponsible of them to advertise this as a you never have to eat food again. I really, really do. I think it's horrible advertising. Well, I think this, okay, the person asking is a trainer, I think, right? I, I believe I, I believe he's a trainer or her, I'm not sure. But I, the way they worded the question was like, I think they had a client that is as was interested in this drink or purchased it or whatever. And here's the, if you have a client or somebody who, who wants to take these drinks, I think addressing the drink itself and does it have, cause all they're going to have all these, you know, studies that support, Oh, you can get the same nutrients or this or that bullshit. And you can go around and around circles debating it. The relationship that this person has with food is what needs to be addressed. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's some either psychological stuff that they either are dealing with. Like I had a client who actually wanted me to let her drink this. And I remember like it happened to also be my client that had like the worst relationship. Dude, with food. Th- this is the I same. Knew. This is the same thing as like saying, fuck, I'm, I'm so sick of like, I'm so sick of relationships with people. I'm just going to jerk off all the time and yeah. never date anybody yeah. ever again. Isolate myself. It's the and same. And become the Unabomber. It's the same thing. If you look at food like it's a fucking hassle, it's horrible. I just want to drink it and get it over with so I can work. Uh, Ex- that is exactly, have a problem. That is exactly the mentality yeah. of the client that I'm talking about, which leads me to give that advice is that there's something – it's not about debating with your client or trying to educate them on – how much more healthier it is for you to actually chew your food or find whole foods, kind of all the, the spiel at salad. That's true, okay? But what needs to be really dove into is the relationship that this person probably has with food, that this would even be an option that they would want to, to do. So I would address that above all things. I mean, sure, it, it, it's not going to kill you overnight. Sure, it has some nutrient value to it. Sure, all those things. But why would you even want to go that route? And what type of person would ask that? And the person that you just described, Sal, is literally to a T, that's the mentality of the client that mm-hmm. I had. It was just like, oh, just this whole food thing is just so annoying trying to figure out. So <laughs> weird. Yeah, it's just so it's much. Too much like, for too, me. too much. Yeah. I'm too busy. I got too much going on. Yeah. I just need something simplified for yeah. me. Just put a catheter in me because I can't I can't be bothered to go yeah. take a pee there in the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. No. Stadium, buddy. There's a plug. <laughs> Our next in the qu- show notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they sell on Amazon, right? Yeah, for sure. All right. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's brain.fm for 20% off. Also, mind pump at the checkout. 
You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. SR Arts asks, how do you get enough calories in when you are intermittent fasting? Um, so here's a, here's the thing with intermittent fasting. It is not a way to diet. Mm. Uh, it is not a way to get the right amount of macronutrients and calories or whatever. Intermittent fasting itself has health benefits and just leave it at that. So yeah. if you're doing it so often that you're losing more weight than you like, and you're just having a tough time, get all your calories in you're and you're like, too much. <laughs> you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop intermittent fasting. Um, it should not be used for those for those things at all. So I have clients that I have uh, fast, and the, but the reason why I have them fast is either because of inflammation or because I want to reintroduce certain foods and I want to go through a baseline, or because I want to see them, you know, what happens to them on a mental level uh, with with the fast. Like, okay, I, have, I haven't eaten in 24 hours. Like, what's going on psychologically? How do you feel? What are the foods you crave? Like, what's the first meal that you eat? Um, and then of course we have the you know the the physiological health benefits. Fasting promotes uh, cell death from old cells. When you go and refeed, your body then re- rebuilds and replenishes those cells and you have this kind of rejuvenated um, system. I myself, in fact, as we're recording, am going through, I'm probably going to do a 48-hour fast. I'm going to see if I can do a 72-hour fast. Now, I'm not doing this to get leaner to lose weight or any of that stuff. I know I'm going to lose weight. I know I'm probably going to lose strength during that period of time. But the reason why I'm doing it is I've been dealing with, for the past couple of weeks, gut issues that are just just really frustrating. And I know, first of all, not eating is going to give my gut time to heal because it doesn't have to digest. So I'm thinking I have some inflammation there that should go, that should go away. But number two, uh, I do know that a nice chunk of my immune system is going to become new. Literally, it's going to be recycled. The old ones are going to die and the new ones are going to be rebuilt. And I should have less of an autoimmune response when I eat. And that's how intermittent fasting should be used. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's also the mental clarity uh, component that people get when they they fast. I get it, you know, myself. I notice that I get much more clear uh, during the fast. But when yeah, when people are like, "Oh man, I'm fasting, but I'm just losing too much weight," you know, what do I do? It's like, okay, we'll stop fasting for a little while. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, it's- I don't. I never recommend if I got a client because if you're worried about getting enough calories in, it sounds like you're somebody who's trying to build or put weight on or put size on. Uh, I don't recommend intermittent fasting if you struggle with getting enough calories and getting enough food in. Uh, restricting for a 17 hour or 15 hour window in the middle of the day is not advantageous of that. So um, it's extremely difficult for, especially a guy my size, to get the amount of calories and food I need to uh, to build and gain. So that's why I only do this maybe maybe once a week, and I tend to do this on days where I'm less active. Now, I've had people and professionals say that, oh, I think it's, it's you know, it would be better to do it on a day when you're more active, this and that. Well, I, I don't want to lose a bunch of weight from it. I want to do it for the health benefits of it. And that's the only purpose why it's even into, into my routine and why I have it in my clients. I'm not paying attention to the scale. I'm not worried about the grams of protein I'm getting that day. I'm not worried about the grams of fat. I mean, more than likely, I'm going to under consume on all of them. You're fasted. You're mm-hmm. fasted for a majority of the day, more than which likely, is the, which is kind of part of the point of fasting. Yeah, right? yeah it, you're, it's the the idea is that I'm I'm grossly under on all those things, and I'm not worried about it, and I'm not, and I and what I think people struggle with is getting beyond that and that fear of oh my god, I didn't hit my protein intake for today, I didn't hit my caloric intake today, two pounds of muscle is going to fall off my body that I worked so hard to build. Like no, it doesn't work that way, and that's not going to happen to you. So, and just because the scale drops down three or five pounds, it's not because of that. It's because you haven't consumed any food. You're lower on your calories. Mm-hmm. You're not retaining for every, for every gram, for every three grams of carbs that you have in your body, your body will hold three ounces of water. So if you're on this super low calorie intake for the day, just think, and just think of how little of water your body's holding that much. And then if you ever set a half a gallon or a gallon of water on a scale and see how much it weighs, it's a lot of weight. Like, I think it's like 12 pounds, yeah. eight to 12 yeah. pounds, you know, a gallon of water. Still, weighs. I think there's still a place for it. Uh, 
you know, while like in a surplus or like I'm, I'm in, in a bulking phase. Oh, I still do it while right? bulking. So that's yeah. important to bring up though, because you know, there's a way that you can do it where uh, you're oversaturated. You're, you're just, um, you know, you're retaining water, all these types of things where now I want to, uh, restrict, you know, for, for a certain window and then I can assimilate everything so much more effectively. So, um, it, there really is a performance element there. A hundred percent as well. hundred percent. And this is, so you get similar. Okay. When they've studied these side by side, intermittent fasting and carb cycling, get some similar benefits. Uh, and so anybody who's carb cycled before and knows what it's like to go low, 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 two or three days in a row, and then the refeed, that anabolic feeling you get or that massive pump or how you just feel so great after that quote unquote refeed day that you get is a similar feeling that you'll get if you just implement fasting once a week or once every week and then go back to eating again, you'll get this surge in that, like Justin's saying, this increase of performance of growth hormone gets shot up. You're going to feel like you're all cleaned out and then you get all, all those carbohydrates go to good use. So intermittent fasting, carb cycling, they have similar benefits, Very uh, the same type of concept. Even if you are bulking, I think you can utilize it. But then while you're doing it, you're not really concerned uh, in that day. And mm. this is also why I'm not a big fan of actually intermittent fasting every day. I know a lot of people, I've seen it on our forum a lot, mm -hmm. they do every day, they do this like intermittent fasting and to me, I think when you've done that for a long period of time, your body's probably gotten pretty efficient at your eating windows and yeah, adapting. Yeah, I've actually got, yeah, so I was going to voice in a little bit of going through that struggle because, you know, realizing that uh, we can, this move over into this new location, like how much less we're moving from not training as many clients or, you know, not mm -hmm. being as active, like that has been a, somewhat of an answer to me to repeat a couple times a week intermittent fasting and uh you know and that was a great way to to monitor and manage you know where my weight was kind of coming up or down um but like you said now it's at a point where it's too efficient and yep. i need to interrupt that process and so you have to evaluate uh that and it's mm -hmm. but it does have great health benefits so it's something i'm going to repeat in the future but i have to step out no i mean from a health standpoint you're you're probably better off doing it here and there intermittently right and having you know wider gap of intermittent times longer fasts so right, and i'm right. just talking about the science so you know let's say you know once or twice a week you intermittent fast where you don't eat until 2 p.m right maybe you do that once a week and by the way the individual variance in terms of the ability to handle fasting is pretty dramatic so i know people who they can fast too much and they'll get some really negative effects women in particular so it's really on an individual basis but just speaking, you know, just general, right? Let's say you did intermittent fasting, you know, once or twice a week. And that's just what you did for the most part. And maybe once every three months or four months, you do a 24 to 72 hour fast. You're going to get different benefits from those long fasts as well. And that I'm talking about from a purely health standpoint in terms of the anti-cancer effects, the immune, you know, health effects, uh, you know, all those different types of things. But here's something else you want to consider when you fast, and I hate to say this because then people use it to diet, but it does make getting leaner easier. And I'm not talking about the calorie aspect of it. I'm talking about the appetite the, control. Yeah, the way your body, yeah. the way your brain actually receives food uh, the, the, per, or perceives food. So I notice when I fast and then I go eat food, uh, foods that are that I may think are normally bland will then all of a sudden explode with flavor because I've upregulated certain receptors. I get a dopamine response again. So now I'm going and eating things that normally feel a little boring to me and they're so delicious. And this may be useful for some people who find eating quote unquote, you know, healthy whole foods boring. You know, a good fast typically will mm -hmm. hype those things up, get those, uh, you know, those, those receptors upregulated and get those taste, uh, you know, uh, receptors or taste sensors to kind of become more sensitive. And now you eat, you know, broccoli or something else. And you're like, wow, this is really good. Next up is Rumo Third. If Mind Pump were to break up and you all went your separate ways That's to terrible. create individual <laughs> podcasts, how dare you? <laughs> What would be the focus and the name of your individual podcast? That's hilarious. This is great because we were literally the reason why I picked this question was we were we're gonna break up. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> no, we <laughs> See were you later, guys. We were uh, talking about um, segmenting uh, the future of podcast, the future of the show. Like so, eventually, 
the podcast having, you know, five to seven days of, of podcast or potentially having a separate channel for each one of us and that we'd have topics. Yeah, because right now we, we have four podcast episodes a week, but we would like to at some point be able to drop seven. So like every single day there's something new. Mm-hmm. And like Adam was saying, it, it, some of them would be segmented to, segmented to be just one of us and it would be something that wouldn't be fitness related. Yeah, because I think we all recognize that there's probably a ton of people out there that love to listen to Sal and absolutely hate to hear me talk. And I'm sure there's a, most people love <laughs> Justin but are annoyed by Sal and I. So we, we understand that there are certain people that gravitate towards uh, one or the other and want to hear more of what that person has to Like, for example, I think uh, we talked about Sal. Well, Sal, first of all, what do you think yours personally before? Well, I- so I have a lot of passions and uh, so what's funny is I I actually considered doing a podcast. I wanted to do podcasts or some something like that um, a long time ago, and it wasn't fitness. Uh, I've, I'm, of course, I've always been in fitness, but I also have a deep passion for uh, current events, politics, economics, kind of that that sphere. And um, I would want to do a podcast where I discuss those things, where I talk about um, you know world politics, uh, U.S. politics, uh, economics, um, you know, uh, uh, societal you know, and cultural events, you know, uh, things that pop up, you know, in the news, discussing them, what they mean, you know, uh, navigating through those things. I can be extremely opinionated and polarizing. If you've been listening to Mind Pump for longer than two minutes, you probably know this already. Uh, and um, those categories are areas where uh, my opinions are just as strong um, uh, as they are in fitness. And I have huge passions for them. I would love to do a podcast where I talk about that stuff. I would absolutely love to debate those things. I'd love to debate economics. I'd love to debate peace. I'd love to debate equality, freedom, you know, uh, just the things that are just moving culture in different directions, whether it's forwards or backwards. Uh, I'd love to talk about them and and the philosophies behind them and, you know, get objective and look at what works, what doesn't work. Um, And I'm pretty sure I'd piss everybody off. I tend to disagree at, at some point with everybody. Mm. Um, and uh, it would just be fucking fun from my standpoint. I don't know if it'd be fun to listen to. I'm sure, like <laughs> I said, at some point it'd, it'd irritate everybody. But that would be 100% um, what I would want to talk about uh, on my separate podcast. Yeah, so for everybody that you know loves the information and like just the, the plethora of knowledge that you know Sal and Adam and you know everybody's bringing into the table, uh, that can't stand the humor and the entertainment side of it. They just want to fast forward to the beginning. My podcast would not be for you. <laughs> so, fuck you. Yours would be the beginning of my podcast. <laughs> yeah. No, my, mine, yeah, literally would be more, way more, way more dick jokes. Way more like the beginning, but uh, a little more format to it um, where we, we sort of dive into um, science fiction film and like um, we, we just – have more fun skits, like more comedy based, uh, purely entertainment kind of, uh, we're not trying to teach you anything. Um, but just, just kind of silly and lighthearted and, and that kind of a thing. So that's, that, that would be something that I would, I would, I would love to, to just, you know, just, just have fun and, and dive into that as well as this. So, um, yeah, you didn't say what yours was called, did you? Oh, uh, I don't know if I want to say the name because oh, uh, well, you gotta catch a he, name. he already has a name. I already have a name too, bro. Yeah, I want to hear him. I don't even. I, uh, so I actually own the I, I own the domain. Well, before. then why are you worried? Oh, wow. <laughs> you're good. No, I know you know what because I don't know if I'll go with it. Oh, you're right. You know we should probably wait. Yeah. Why? So I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm the only one that doesn't really have a name. I'll come up with if one. You're by like time married you guys... to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. No. What do you? What do you? You're not gonna give it up for what? Well, no, the, that's no, part there, of the question. There was a name it that I. The there was a name that I enjoyed for. It was called Angry Liberty, and it was just because I, like I was that name. I was pissed off. And I, I like, like to that. talk about. I, that, I, that, I like that. That's you know? fire, dude. Yeah. I, I, I'm definitely. I mean, you know, I don't make any any secrets that I'm, uh, you know, uh, very very uh, strong believer in individual liberty um, and the 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 peace and prosperity that economics um, has brought to the world as much as there's a lot of problems with it um, there's there's it's really done an incredible thing for for mankind like I hate it when people say shit like you know money is evil um, because mm. money is just a tool mm-hmm. like money itself is nothing I could put a pile of money on the table and it'll never kill anybody or hurt anybody it's people that can be good or evil money is just a brilliant way of transferring 
you know, uh, value of goods or whatever. Like if you have chickens and I have, you know, uh, you know, logs and you want logs and I want chickens. Well, there's no problem there. We could trade. But what if I want, you know, if I want to buy tires, chicken but logs. I have logs and you have chickens, how do I get, how do I, you know, get value from you so I can get those logs, you know, those, the, the, that product over there? Well, money, money represents all that. So that's just a, a you know, little, little rant there, but um, I, mm. those are the kind of subjects I like to tackle. I like that name though. That's Did you, what's your, are you going to give your name, Justin or what? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we were thinking around like no onions just because it's like so random and, uh, <laughs> My friend and I kind of came up with that a long time ago. No, I and I think it'd be appropriate because people would be like, "Huh? What does that even mean?" And that's the point, you know. <laughs> you don't even know what it means. The whole fucking show, you don't know what it means. Is but that you like? Love it. Is that like a play on words? Like, because an onion, yeah. you have to peel back so many layers to get yes. to it. It's like there's no fucking all of that. It's and no, I hate onions to begin with. It's so no, it worked out. Peeling yeah. back, it's just in your it's face. It smells, you know. Damn like, it, Justin. all this format smells. I swear to God, it's brilliant. smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> no onions. <laughs> oh shit! Um, if I would do first, I just want to point out though uh, that I would never do an individual podcast. Yeah. Uh, probably one of my greatest fears, believe it or not, as much as I fucking ramble and talk, is to have dead air or dead space. And one of the things I love about having these two gentlemen is when there is a time that I feel like I don't have anything to contribute, or I feel like I don't have something really intelligent to say about that. I feel that one or the other will, mm-hmm. and I and that gives me that makes this v- no stress. There's no stress when I when we do mind pump. It, I absolutely enjoy every minute of it. It's very therapeutic. It doesn't take a lot of work for me. It's very natural. I think if I had to do my own show, it would take a lot more work. There would be a lot more stress involved. There'd be a lot more pressure to give just constant information all by myself. So I just want to put that out there. That that would probably never happen. If I were to segment it, though, or do something that I think just I would talk about by myself, it would either be somewhere in the the world of bodybuilding or business, or maybe both. Maybe it would be the business of bodybuilding or bodybuilding business, and maybe that would be the name. I don't know. But I think that I would enjoy- Double Bs. Yeah, yeah, maybe it would be Double Bs. Double Bs. Yeah, I think I could could get into- um, I could get into talking about that for quite some time. I would love to share- uh, a lot of mics. You can have a co-host. Yeah, I mean, I know exactly. I don't think you do yeah, it by it's yourself. Not, exactly. That'd I think be I, weird. Well, I think I would have. Well, why it wouldn't be that? Weird. Most people do that. A lot of Joe Rogan. I don't know how like, people do. Yeah, but they always have guests on. Yeah. I don't think Joe. I don't think they ever really do a lot of episodes. Oh yeah. Episodes. Well, no. I think that of course we would have guests. But I, even then, even having there's a difference between me interviewing a guest by myself versus having two or three co-hosts. Oh, really? oh, oh absolutely. I, oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Tw- I mean. Oh, I do that. So too. yeah, no brainer that I would be interviewing somebody or have some sort of a co-host i still think you just be by yourself i still hey, everybody th- yeah, I, yeah, yeah hi day this is, 36 this is me again <laughs> this is me again uh, i don't know if i could feel that fill that much air up but um i do think that there's a lot to uh there are a lot that i have to share in in regards to business kind of uh a lot of the pitfalls that i went through a ton of books that i've read that i've enjoyed a lot of people that i've learned from um, all the different weird businesses that I've had and the, the ones that have been successful, the ones that have failed. I think I could talk for a really long time about that stuff. And I just became v- recently extremely fascinated with the bodybuilding world. And I, if you were to ask me that five, six years ago, I've always been somebody into business. But five, six years ago, I would have no desire to talk about bodybuilding. But going through what I've gone through now and seeing that side and I, I found a connection to it. I enjoyed the shit out of it. And then I also saw so much wrong with it. I could talk for hours about all the different issues that I have with it and the things that I think need to change and be better. So because I, it's a little bit related to Mind Pump, it would be. I think it would be probably easy to get guests and stuff. You know what I mean? To be able yeah. to do that. Yeah. Well, even business, I feel like we've had some really good entrepreneur minds mm-hmm. on here, and I think I could go that way. And then we could be guests. I'd we love to have you guys hosts. on my show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that would be fun. We'd be guest hosts on each other's I'd, show. But I, yeah. I do want to say put that you in wigs and all that shit. both of you have obviously Whoa. thought about this more yeah. than I have, and both of you have better names than I do. I'm going to have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to come up with- We'll a, circle back to you. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to come time. up with a more- The fact that this guy's already got his trademarked, and then Justin's been talking about <laughs> it for fucking years. He's got the domain. Yeah, he's got the domain already. Wow. So they have put- Sal, have Sal's been planning obvious, his escape. Yeah, I was going to say, obviously they've been thinking about- Yoko Ono I better start thinking about it in case we break up, because I thought we were going to be together. 
together as a band forever. Holy shit. But I better watch out for fucking Diana Ross over here because yeah. <laughs> Adam's I an optimist. Know, I don't know what she's gonna go off. Are, and do. Uh, Diana Ross. <laughs> do you have Do you have a, a, a uh, co-host in mind already, Justin? Yeah, it would probably be my friend from from high school. Uh, yeah. yeah, just because he's he he always talks to me about like uh, I mean this is the guy that we've been like trying to write an actual science fiction novel with forever and that would be half of the premise of the show would be like us <laughs> in our stupid conversations that like everybody like my wife just rolls her eyes you know and we start talking about it because we're so passionate about yeah. it you know you know it's funny when you do that too you think like oh my god if only people could hear us we're so awesome and then uh, people listen to people like, well, like uh, there's not going to be as like as many people into that show i, I guarantee uh, it. You, i don't know man you're pretty fucking hilarious that yeah. vlog that we recorded at Paleo FX, uh, man, your bits were, yeah. and it's all natural. That's well, just Justin. Yeah. I have, I have the co. I just two people I would uh, consider as co-hosts. I don't want to say their Jesus names. Jesus Christ, you guys have thought a lot about this. Well, no, <laughs> you fuckers. I've actually I'm talked. Getting uncomfortable. Now. Actually, I'm going to come into work one day, and these you, guys will be like, "Oh, by the way." No, you know, you know both of them. I can't. I don't want. Doug say, and I are going to start one. Fuck you guys. Yeah. yeah, that sounds good. The Doug and Adam hour, where Adam <laughs> oh yells God. at Doug the whole time. Well, you know what? The only one that's going to come out is uh, Adams because he's got the producers. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. he's smart See, I'm smarter he's with my smart. co-host <laughs> no this this one girl a friend of mine that man if she if we got on a political you know podcast guarantee you she would get she would piss she's like oh my god you want to talk about polarizing she is fucking fire piss and her voice is so soft and sweet and then she says some shit and you're just like <gasps> we're gonna oh. get hate mail forever oh, wow <laughs> yeah it'd be really fun uh check it out 30 days of coaching no, available, this one is mind pump. available for free at mindpumpmedia.com. It's for anybody. Uh, it's chock full of information. It's something we designed uh, as a gift to our listeners. All you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com. Uh, you opt in, and then you're going to get uh, tons of great information on different topics and subjects related to health, fitness, performance, and wellness. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on air, like the ones you just heard, all you got to do is go to Instagram and ask the questions on our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media. We also have our own personal Instagram pages. Each one of them has a different flavor, and you'll learn something different from each one. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>